Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Melissa, and it's time for art class. Guess what we are going to be learning about today? I'll give you a hint. Here is the state of Louisiana in red. And here is a picture of a fresh water fish. That's right. We are going to learn about Louisiana's state fish, which is called the speckled perch. And we're also going to draw this fish today. And it's springtime, which is always a good time to go fishing. Come on, let's go ahead and get our supplies. You are going to need one sheet of white paper, just like this, a pair of pencils and an eraser. You are also going to need your box of crayons and your box of markers. Here is a picture of the Louisiana speckled perch. It is also known as a white perch, a white crappy, and sockele. I have heard sockele more often than the other. Now, did you know that this is the Louisiana State freshwater fish, which means this fish is found mostly in lakes, bayous, rivers, and creeks. It likes to be in moving water, but it's very plentiful, especially up north in large, fresh bodies of water. They like to hide behind tall grasses in the water or fallen trees that lay in the water as well. They even weigh about one pound. Now here is a real photograph that a fisherman took when he caught this fish. It is fishing season and these speckled perch are very good to eat. Do you notice the shape of this fish? Yeah, check it out. What shape does this look like? An oval, you got it. And if you check out his fins and his tail, do you notice how we can make a curvy line to draw these? Pretty cool, huh? And if you notice the color, what color do you notice on this fish? Yeah, it's different colors, but we definitely see what? Lots of black, and you see these little spotted patterns, even on his fins and his tail. And we also see yellow. Isn't it kind of like a, um, like a yellowish greenish? And of course it has like a silvery look to it. And I even notice a little bit of orange right here. Let's take a closer look at another photograph I have of the fish so you could see his speckled black patterns up very close. Here's another picture of a fisherman that caught this perch and you could see up close look at these they're not really dots they're just kind of like scribbles of black and do you notice at the top how these black patterns are very close together and then as you move down the fish they start to what spread apart so that's what we're going to do we are going to make black patterns very close and then as we move down the fish we're going to spread it apart and there's even a couple that you could see on his fins we're going to do the same thing so basically you're going to follow me boys and girls step by step and i will show you how to create your very own louisiana speckled perch here you can see this is my drawing of the white perch also known as the speckled perch. Notice most of it I colored what? 
yellow. That's correct. And I, I added a yellow green to it and highlights of dark green. Remember the dark green was way up high towards the top and a little bit of orange we saw on the bottom, right? But what's the most important thing you think? That's right. The speckled pattern. And my speckled patterns were so close, I just colored them together on top. But I'm going to try to do a better job this time. <laughs> I'll show you how to draw the eyes, too. And these are the gills, how he breathes. And pretty much when you catch fish, the mouth is open, huh? So if you noticed, I put a big uh, brown hook because these fish are caught a lot because by humans because we want to eat them, right? They're very good for us. And we have so many in Louisiana. So it's a great time to get out and go fishing. Now, if you notice, I have some water to show the fish coming out of the water with the sky in the background. We're gonna do something pretty similar. All right, I'm so glad you had a chance to look at my drawing. Let's go ahead and do this together. All right, boys and girls, so I would like you to get your white paper out and your pencils and eraser so we can start drawing the body of our fish with the fins and the tail and all the rest of the details. First thing I want you to do, boys and girls, is I would like you to draw an oval. We're going to draw an oval right in the center of our paper and I kind of want to leave him at an angle just to show that the hook is kind of pulling him out the water. So I'm probably going to go in this diagonal direction. I'm going to draw my oval about right here, kind of like a football. It does not have to be perfect. Remember, there are big fishes and little fishes. So, and there, none of them are exactly the same. All right, after, once you draw an oval, we are going to move on to some of the fins and the tail. So the first thing I'd like you to do, do you see the top of this oval in the middle? I'd like you to draw a dot. And on the bottom part in the middle, wherever you think that is, I'd like you to draw a dot. The fins are going to start here. Ready? Go up and draw a curve and come around. Curve up and back around. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Watch. You're going to make a curve going down and back around. Now, so we're just, it's almost like a wobbly circle. Now, the fins of this fish have a bunch of wavy lines and it starts in the middle and then it angles down. So watch, watch me. Wavy, wavy. Now I'm gonna get a little bit smaller and come down like that. So draw some wavy lines and bring it down. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Watch. Wavy, 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 and wavy. Do you see how I kind of went at an angle? And then what I'm going to do is take my eraser and erase this middle curve because we don't need it. So I just kind of showed you how to draw a fin by drawing a curvy line and a wavy line and we're going to put them together. And you could erase the dot. We don't need the dot. That was just for you. Remember, you're doing the best you can. And I'm going to go and outline this so you can see it. So you're attaching your wavy lines to your curvy line. And that is going to be one giant fin. So it should look something like this. And I went ahead and darkened mine so you could see it. Very good. Now, 
he also has a little fin on the bottom so we're just going to draw a curve and a couple of wavy lines and have it come in curve a couple of wavies and you can have it come in all right now you ready we are going to draw lots of curvy lines Watch, we're going to curve it all the way around, boys and girls, because inside of his fin, he has lots and lots of curves. Do you see that? So go ahead and draw curvy lines from the bottom to the top of his fin, and then you can draw these curvy lines right next to it. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm drawing a curvy line right next to it. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now, if you feel more comfortable drawing straight lines, you can. Just a slight curve from the bottom of the body to the end of the fin. Now, after you do that and leave some space in between, you can draw another curve right next to it. So now it's got some thin curves and some thick curves. And that is how we make the fin. I'm also going to put it on this side. You're doing a great job, boys and girls. It takes time. You just keep repeating these curvy lines inside of his fin. Now I'm going to draw the tail. So if you want to stop what you're doing and take a look, we're going to draw curvy lines again. The tail is at the bottom, right? So I'm going to take my pencil and draw two curves just like that, right on the end of his oval. Do you see that? Very good. Now watch, we're going to bring it out and in and out and in. It almost looks like an upside down heart. So you make a big curve on one side, a big curve on the other side, and you make them touch. So, so far we have two big fins and a big tail and a little fin. Now we can add the curvy or straight lines on his tail. And I'm just going to guess. See that? And you could add a thin one right next to your thick ones. I don't think the tail is as perfectly placed as the fins are. It's kind of hard to even tell on a real fish what exactly is the tail doing. Because it's a lot smaller, it's harder to see. So you just draw some lines about halfway. Curvy lines or straight lines. And you can add one more right next to it, just like we did here. We're going to draw his mouth and eyes next. All right, boys and girls. So way at the top, the top end of this oval, remember how I told you to draw two curves on the bottom? We're going to draw two curves on the top, just like that. And we're going to pretend that this fish just got caught. And when you catch a fish, those of you who had caught fish before, the uh, hook has a worm on it. And, you know, the fish like to eat worms. And it can go inside of his mouth. So when you open his mouth, it kind of makes a circle. So we're going to draw a circle. with another circle going around it to show that that is his mouth being open. 
and you could draw, draw a letter J to show the hook. We're going to pretend our Sokole got caught by a giant hook and the hook is always at the end of a string on the fishing pole, right? So I'll go over it again. We have curvy line with an oval or circle for the mouth, a letter J to make a hook with some string on the end. A fishing pole has string and a hook. And we're going to make the eyes at the top, watch. And a nice good size oval with an oval on the inside. And last part, we're going to make his gill. Watch. Let's make a big curve. And another one. And right underneath that last curve, we can draw a tiny curve because this is like the black part right under his gills. And we're going to bring a little line down and curve it to make his last little fin. And I'm going to draw some straight and curvy lines for this little fin. So you're just making some wobbly lines in between his mouth and his fin, right? His gill has a curvy line with another curvy line on top. A s lots of curves, boys and girls. A small curvy underneath. You can make some bumpy lines and draw your last little fin. The rest is all tracing with markers, making our speckled black pattern and coloring. So if you would like to copy off of me, you can. I am going to just go ahead and add some water waves. I think half of him is going to be in the water and the other half of this fish is going to be out of the water. All right, boys and girls, so keep in mind, you can always look if you're still trying to finish up your drawing. I think I'm going to give him a yellow hook. Sometimes you'll see like gold hooks or silver hooks. Um, I'm going to give him a yellow one because I want mine to be gold. And I guess I'm going to take the string and make it gray. So right now, boys and girls, what I'm doing is tracing my water and coloring in my hook. And after that, all we have left to do is trace the entire fish in black. Everything that you drew, boys and girls, you're going to trace in black marker. And I'll show you why. And you see, as I'm tracing, I could actually color inside of those thin lines that I drew. So go ahead and finish drawing your fish. Draw the hook with the wire from the fishing pole. Please make your water waves and trace every part on the fish that we drew.
I'm tracing all of my lines and all of my shapes. All of the lines on my fins and tail are traced. And I colored in his eye and the bottom of his gills. So the only thing colored black are the eyes and in the actual gill. All right, boys and girls, what I'm gonna do while you're tracing your water or the parts of your fish, I'm gonna start making my speckled design, my pattern on the fish. Remember how I told you at the top of the fish, all of these speckles are very close together to where he almost looks like he's entirely black on top, right? So I'm going to start with my speckled design and you can just kind of watch and see what I'm doing. Do you see how I'm making my little scribbles of black marker very close? All right, so once you get through the top section, I'm going to kind of start to spread them out as I move down. Do you see that? They're not as close together. And he doesn't have anything on his um, mouth or gills, so I'm not even gonna bring, him, bring the speckles over there. So my little speckle design spreads out as it moves down, and it also gets a little bit smaller. Do you see that? You see? Oh, so basically on top, I put them very close together. And as I moved my speckled designs down, I spread them apart. And there's even a couple on his what? That's right, fins and tail. Very good. So you kind of get to see how I'm doing this, which will help you with your design. And notice on the fin and tail, they're closer together on the edge of his body and it spreads out. Pretty neat, huh? So far, boys and girls, you should have your fish completely drawn and traced in black, his eye and gill in black. Draw and color your hook and line with a marker and your draw your water waves with a marker. Once you do that, you can start this speckled design, which is pretty fun. Now, after that, what you're gonna do is color the fish. Now, do you remember the color of the fish? The darkest green was right on top. And then the dark yellow green was not too far behind that. Now you can always mix your crayons too, right? I guess when my speckles start to um, spread out is when I'll get to the lighter yellow green. You see that? And I'm gonna use my yellow green, the light one, the one that has more yellow, to finish coloring his entire body, even his fins and tail. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to give you a sneak preview to show you what this fish will look like when it's all finished.
I use my light yellow green for all of the fins and most of the body. Now check this out. I'm going to color his eyes a little green and I'm going to add a little bit of green on his fins and tail. boys and girls. I told you I was going to give you a sneak preview and here it is. I think my picture is finished. Did you notice that I used two different shades of blue? A light blue for the sky and a dark blue for the water so you could see how the fish is actually getting pulled out of the water, right? And remember I told you you can use any shade of yellow green crayon for your fish and if you wanted to I added just a hint of orange for the bottom so once you're done drawing all of your black speckles you can start coloring your fish yellow green and the water in the sky blue I even put a few clouds and if you want to you can put clouds or even a sun it's up to you but most of the time, fishermen like to go fishing on a nice sunny day. So we definitely want to see blue skies, right? I think you're doing a great job with your white perch, boys and girls. I'm so glad you joined me today. I had a lot of fun creating our very own speckled perch. Do you remember some of the other names for this freshwater fish? You might hear the term sakale around here. Um, we hear a lot of people talk about sakale. That's the same thing. What's another name? White crappy or white perch. Good. Do you remember what shape gave us the body of this fish? oval that's right and do you remember what type of lines pretty much gave us the fins and the tail that's right mostly curvy lines and what color gave this freshwater fish a cool speckled pattern very good black Black was very important to create the pattern throughout this entire fish. Well, as you go through the rest of your week, I hope you get inspired to create another fish. Maybe you will even get the chance to go fishing. Until next time, have a great day.